tucked away in the Hertfordshire countryside to the north of London, beyond avenues of apple trees, stood an empty Rolls-Royce factory and a deserted aerodrome. Once, the skies above the runways of Leavesden had been filled with the buzz of wartime mosquito fighters heading off into battle. On well over a million square feet of floor space stood the largest covered factory area in the world. In the next few weeks, it would be transformed with hundreds of skilled technicians once more filling the cavernous buildings. For this empty factory was about to come to life again as an extraordinary new tenant moved in. His name was Bond, James Bond. What you are about to see is how the Broccoli family and United Artists have restored the world's greatest secret agent to his former glory in GoldenEye. The film was to be based at Leavesden. Uncannily perfect for the job, the site seemed to have been biding its time for a turn in the spotlight. For this, the biggest bond of all, even the huge 007 stage at Pinewood was too small. Presumably we can use some of these buildings as uh, locations in them for that. Oh, definitely. definitely. I mean, Production yeah. designer Peter Lamont yeah. found himself with an unusual problem. How to turn 1.25 million square feet of interior space into one of Europe's newest film facilities. Usually, studios offer limited room, and sets must be constructed within tight parameters. Here, space was only limited by imagination. We're fortunate enough to be here today, embarking on the 17th James Bond. Where we are now will eventually be two big stages, one about 220 feet long by 130, the other about 240 feet, somewhat bigger than the stage of Pinewood. With the signing of the deal came fleets of contractors. The brief to turn the factory into a British studio, nicknamed Cubbywood, after Cubby Broccoli. Producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael Wilson assembled the Bond regulars, but also sought out new blood, starting with Bond himself. Months of speculation ended when 007's new identity was revealed. The mantle was finally passed to Pierce Brosnan. Here we go, 350 journalists from 40 countries met him as the hot favourite was confirmed. I stood there and I could hear the clamour outside of the press and everything just went into slow motion. And then they put the music on, the Bond music, and suddenly you just go chick, 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 chick. And I thought, I'm doing this, I'm doing it about to stand in front of all these people and announce to the world, you know, that I'm going to do this role. And also, hopefully, have colossal fun. There's no ghosts here. There's no ghosts of Sean. There's no ghosts of the 60s. There's no ghosts of Roger. The factory has a good feel to it. It's like a fresh, clean slate. The great thing about Brosnan is that he will certainly uh, carry on the tradition of humor. Um, I think he's intelligent. I also think he's a damn good actor, and good-looking he certainly is. So, however I do it, will be unique in my own way. There have been huge pluses. The series hasn't been a success because of things that didn't work. They've been a success because of things that did work. And I think uh, Pierce will carry on that tradition and hopefully will bring, you know, through his own personality and so forth, all of the successful elements that have previously been in the characters, but maybe a few of his own. He's Irish after all, so the sense of humor for a start will be interesting. <laughs> the film's budget was set at approximately $50 million. It sounds high, and it's certainly the largest ever for a Bond film. But in these times of escalating production costs, when a movie could cost as much as $180 million, the amount was appropriate, considering the number of overseas locations, stunts, set pieces and special effects that would need to be created to enhance the action. GoldenEye had to feature everything fans had come to expect over the years, only more so. Hundreds of storyboard frames explained every stage of the script, detailing each scene, shot by shot. Everything is worked out, everything is storyboarded, everything is broken down into first unit, second unit, third unit, all of the model unit, aerial unit, whatever it is, everything is planned to the final dotting of the eye. And that's how we do it, really, and we hope it all kind of works in the end. 
By now, on the starting line of the production, the 007 workforce had swelled to over 500 full-time staff. I think the way that Martin and I work with look is a much more real approach to subjects. There's a glamour to Bond, there's a joie de vivre to it all, which we tried to retain, but at the same time make it more real. I mean, there's nothing really unique in film production. I think the, all that happens is the films get bigger or they get more diverse. And I think the thing about this film has been the diversity of it, is the fact that it is involved second units, involved model unit, and it's involved many differing locations, which all have to be brought together. You want a hand? The thing about the earlier Bond films, I think, was their realism, the fact they were based on a character that was a rakish, devil-may-care MI5 man. He was a real person. And it was built around some experience that Ian Fleming had, so that it was all built on reality. You always get very nervous at this um, point because you have a schedule which is, believe it or not, we have 18 weeks, but it's a very tight 18 weeks. In fact, any film you do, it's never enough time. And uh, my last film was 12 weeks. This is 18. You would think it'd be enough, but it means the planning has to be that much more intricate and, um, and planned very, very carefully. And of course, all of any sort of effect takes time. And uh, so the answer is confident but extremely nervous, I guess. That's what always is before you just start the, um, before you start a movie, you know. But this is going to be a tough one. You yes. feel this is going to be daunting for you, Martin, because it's a great place to jump off. <laughs> yes, and I think, I, no, I, I didn't really see it as daunting, you know. I think it's probably better than most of the other directors who have done this kind of... Uh. shoot underway, a traditional Bond element, 007's briefing from M, was filmed with a twist in the casting that reflected real life changes in Britain's Secret Service. I play M, who is the head of MI6 in London, based in London. Action! That would account for the MiGs and the satellites. And the blackout. Electromagnetic pulse, a first strike satellite weapon developed by the... The Americans and Soviets during the Cold War. I read the brief discovered after Hiroshima, set off a nuclear device in the upper atmosphere. The idea being to knock out the enemy's communications before he, she, or they could tell you. And how that? Go again. Bond, of course, has got a marvelous mind, and she is meant to have a marvelous mind, too. There's obviously a huge respect from her point of view about him, and I suspect maybe a little from him towards her. You don't like me, Bond. You think I'm an accountant. A bean counter more interested in my numbers than your instincts. The thought had occurred to me. Good. Because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. Point taken. Yesterday, which was my first day, was very, very nerve-wracking for me. I've calmed down a bit today, actually. <laughs> better today. Um, and it better still, I hope, tomorrow. But as I say, I shall never get over the excitement of being asked to do it. So, GoldenEye exists. Yes. While Martin Campbell was shooting on one of the six sound stages, the model unit constructed working miniatures for the meticulously planned action sequences, like this destruction of a satellite dish. I'm Derek Meddings, and I'm in charge of all the miniature effects on the uh, new James Bond picture. Uh, this particular shot we're doing today is the helicopter landing um, and it's got to tie in with a shot that we've already done in this sort of weather where it takes off and flies away. We've got a lot of miniatures on this particular film, probably the more miniatures on this than I've probably ever done on any film. An Arctic mountainscape required a Siberian snowstorm of cat litter and self-raising flour to give it a more realistic edge. Turn over! <laughs> This shot uh, and a lot of the other shots that we've got to do, we've got to shoot outside because we've got a sequence with Russian MiGs flying and you can't do those inside. I'm team leader on this project with the MiG-29s. It's uh, one seventh scale. That puts it at about uh, nine feet long and about six foot wingspan. It's powered by two model 15cc engines and that revs at about 21,000 RPM. Gives it a top speed of about 130 miles an hour. We have already done shots 
of them taking off and it looks really very, very good. Not all of the hardware was on such a miniature scale. Large vehicles must undergo intensive testing. This is a T-54 tank, which we are working to do stunts and special effects in St. Petersburg in Russia. There are many modifications that we've made to this to enable us to do the stunts and the special effects and to allow us to run over cars, go through walls, and all the other spectacular things. And basically, this tank does whatever it wants. And... Robbie Coltrane was cast to play the Russian gangster Valentin Zukovsky. And action! Bond needs a favor done in Russia and, and knows that Valentin can fix things for him. Valentin has a limp because he's a bullet in his leg that, uh, that Bond gave him. And I, I do get to say the immortal line when the gun comes up. Walther PPK, 7.65 millimeter. Only three men I know use such a gun. I believe I've killed two of them. <laughs> Irina, take a hike! So, Mr. Bond, what is it that brings you to my neighborhood? Working for MI6, or having decided to join the 21st century. Got it? I know it worked with Martin before, it's excellent. He, he's very, very tough. He's, he knows exactly what he wants. I, I like directors like that. And of course, that's great for the crew too. There's nothing worse than, than a director who, who, who can't explain what he wants, because everybody wants to give the director what he wants. So, secret agent, <laughs> and I just laugh at you, dog. And then, then I go, mm, shake him, but not stir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and have a good laugh about it. Come on, now you've got to make it genuine. You've really got to go with them. Right? Shaken and not stirred. Mm. Big laugh for that. It's very nice to play a baddie. It's very nice to sit at a desk and, you know, it's, it's very, it's a very sort of Orson Wellesy part. I like it a lot. An ordinary British rail commuter train received the 007 makeover, transforming it into a Russian military transporter. For this, the engine and its carriages were moved by road right across England from crew to the studio. All the designs were done, models have been made and approved by Martin. The whole train was then put together, painted, all the decoration was put on, and then we transported it up to the main valley. Stand by, boys, we're gonna go for a take. Yes. Seven, seven, four, take one. Three, two, one, action. Please. You destroy every vehicle you get into. Standard operating procedure. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I play. Q in the Bond films, Major Jeffrey Boothroyd of the Guards. He was actually in the Guards Armour Division. You have a license to kill, and not break the speed limit. And three, two, one, parachute! Right, now pay attention. First, your new car. BMW, agile, high forward gears, all points radar. Self-destruct system, and naturally, all the usual refinements. That's good, OK. We'll print that. What's the use of it? My Renault will do 100. I don't want one that'll do 150. Anyway, my wife wouldn't like me driving it. OK, this is a piton gun, a very specialised gun given to Bond for a certain mission. That's the piton that goes into it. This piton fires into a rock from the gun. <laughs> has a reel mechanism which sends a line out attached to the piton and the reel winds him into the rock 
Also has a laser attachment on the top, which, uh, from being activated, will burn a hole through a steel grill so you can actually get into the nerve gas plant where he has to get to. You must keep fantasy with Bond. And, and um, not only fantasy, but pure relaxation, enjoyment. I mean, what you see on the screen is something that you don't have in this world today. You can just sit back and enjoy it. People always think of the gadgets. I mean, what is your new gadget? I mean, I know absolutely nothing about it. I, I can't work a gadget. I mean, I, any gadget that I work goes wrong. The next challenge was turning the studio's vast back lot into a frozen wasteland. Here, what happens is boom, 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 boom. He hits that position there, right? Now is the correct, the plane comes into shot. Now the question is, which side of the line for the exit next? Where's he going to go next? Well, he's heading for the plane. 8.44, take one. Here we go, stand by, and... Three, two, one, action! This Christmas, there's one thing everyone's agreed on. Babe is unmissable. Who, me? It's Santa's best Christmas gift, Babe. <laughs> Play the McDonald's one and a half million pound Monopoly game. There are thousands of great prizes to win instantly, or by collecting the stickers on special cups and fry boxes. We're giving away 10 mini Mayfairs. United Vacations Holidays in America. Lots of free McDonald's, including Big Macs and Coca-Cola. And even the chance to win 50,000 pounds. Go directly to McDonald's and play the one and a half million pound Monopoly game. For everybody who believes life is not a spectator sport. For everybody who wants to take part. For everybody giving it their best. For everybody, whether they finish in front or behind. The first Flora London Marathon, part of Flora's commitment to a healthier Britain. Flora, for everybody. Hair health advice for men. It's no wonder men wash their hair more than women. But too much washing and towel drying can leave it weak and unhealthy looking. That's why, for frequent washing, I recommend Pantene Pro-V. Its pro-vitamin B5 nourishes the roots and penetrates to the very tip, strengthening your hair and leaving it healthy looking. Every time you wash. Pantene Pro V daily treatment for healthy looking hair. Want a taste you can't resist? No other chip tastes quite like this. Uh -huh. The Pringles can't stop. Uh -huh. The Pringles can't. You've got the snack you like to munch. For a whole lot of taste, try the Pringles Crunch. You got the dog bill. Lizard too. Only Pringles taste this good for you. Uh -huh. The Pringles can't stop. Uh -huh. The Pringles can't. Pringles are irresistible chips. Nothing like these. You pop, you can't stop. The Debenhams winter sale starts tomorrow, the 27th of December. 
Come to the Debenhams Winter Sale and don't be left out in the cold. French Riviera, the first unit assembled at Monte Carlo to shoot on a spectacular prop, the futuristic stealth frigate, the pride of the French Navy. We're in Monaco. This is the beginning of the movie. We're Bond. It's at the casino. Welcome, Martini. Shaken, not stirred. I'm called executive producer. I'm the nuts and bolts man. Uh, make sure that everything is put together. This is a stealth ship. She has a very low radar profile because she's mostly made of artificial materials. This is in fact her first uh, overseas visit. The helicopter which you see from here, which is on the aft deck, is the next generation of battlefield helicopter being produced by Eurocopter. And that actually won't be in, in service with the German and the French governments till the year 2005. They have four prototypes that they're in the process of testing at the moment. And we have prototype number one, which has completed its test program. And uh, so they lent that to us. You cannot screw around when you're dealing with a budget this large and a picture this large and a crew this large. And you really have to get it right. Preparation is everything. The name is Bond. James Bond. Ksenia Sergeyevna on the top. On the top? On the top. It's at a reception on board this ship that the villainess, Xenia, steals the Tiger helicopter which loops the loop above the harbor at Monaco. She's a Russian uh, ex-Soviet fighter pilot, and she sort of um, is involved with a, a group called the Janus Group, and they steal the golden eye, and then, you know, a lot of things happen, and she gets involved with uh, several different characters throughout the movie, people that she has to kill or do something nasty to, because it's a pretty evil character that I play. Very still, please. And action! I have a small surprise from your friends back at the barracks. It's a very bizarre character. And uh, um, she's a, a person with extremes. And whenever no, somebody else would say, this is my limit, I'm not going any further, she would say, I'm going to go full speed ahead. And she just uh, she doesn't have those kinds of limitations that normal people have. <coughs> <laughs> They're very similar in that sense that, of course, he, you know, James Bond loves women, he loves to shoot guns, he loves to drive fast, and um, she's a woman who loves men, and she loves to drive fast and shoot guns and all that kind of stuff. The first time, actually, you see my character in the movie is the first time Bond sees her as well. She drives a red Ferrari in the mountains. I enjoy a spirited ride as much as the next girl, baby. Who's that? The next girl. And then he has his second encounter with her in a casino scene. And then she tries at some point, she tries to kill him as well. Of course, it doesn't work. In the mountains of Toronque, high above Monte Carlo, Bond and Xenia have their first skirmish. The Golden Eye second unit, headed there hoping the fine weather would hold. Moving 007 is a logistical nightmare and must be conducted like a military operation if it is to run smoothly. Luckily, many crew members were old Bond hands and knew what to expect. The British crew were mixed with an experienced local French team. During early tests, the Aston Martin DB5 and the Ferrari collided at high speed and had to be restored to pristine condition overnight. 
Sudden bad weather halted the shooting. Heavy storm clouds instantly descended to obscure the mountain race scenes. British caterers were brought out to provide the frozen crew with the gargantuan English breakfasts that set them up for the day. Remy Julien's stunt car took a bend at too great a speed and crashed into a mountain wall, damaging a camera. It could have been a lot more serious. This mountain top sequence is in fact a playful scene. But there was a strong element of danger because it was played against a sheer drop of several hundred meters. Uh, helicopter, the road should be clear now, yes? Okay, uh, helicopter, uh, we are ready. Cameras covered the action from the air, from the ground, and from a third camera car following behind. I'm alone. Aren't we all? You're late, 007. I have to stop in the bathroom. Ready to save the world again? After you, 006. James? For England. For England, Alec. My case is 006. And, uh, I play a sort of secret agent that accompanies Bond on certain missions. They've got a good relationship, uh, good teamwork, both highly trained, very professional. I'll have him run out of here and drop. So as he's dropping, he's firing. Do you see what I mean? I think Martin wanted us to, uh, especially me and Pierce, to, to be doing his own stunts and, and the fights. Um, it's good for us, in a way. I mean, I always like doing my own, own stunts, and I, I enjoy it, all that business. And I know Pierce does, and uh, I think it looks good when you can actually see, you know, you don't have to cut when, you know, you turn your head and you see it's you know, somebody else, you know. It's good just to be able to carry the fight on, no matter which way you're looking. The audience knows that it's me actually playing the part. It's too easy. Half of everything is luck, James. And the other half? Fate. You're firing low. The danger is not particles in the face. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you're firing low, everything yeah. being directed. So, yeah. so you're only yeah. going to live in the stomachs. Please, well done, Martin's really good with actors. I mean, he, he tells you exactly what he wants and he explains what he wants, and he doesn't really stop till he gets it. Yes, the trail is what it's all about. Dead quiet, stand still. And action! doing it and you know with all the gadgets and the sets and you know uh, the helicopters and cars and tanks and stuff like that you know it's, it's just a much broader uh, range of um, you know things that are happening and uh, just a much bigger sort of film you know it feels big and it's uh, a lot of people involved with it and it's just uh, it's very exciting
On the Caribbean island of Puerto Rico, Bond was busy raising the temperature in a romantic scene with the other new woman in his life. All the heroes I know are dead. Tell you, listen to me. How can you act like this? How can you be so cold? It's what keeps me alive. It's what keeps you, though. <laughs> then it was back to a deadly game of cat and mouse on the walkways of the world's largest radio telescope. In the six years that have passed since the last Bond film, computer technology has arrived to revolutionize action sequences. But the GoldenEye team decided to showcase their stunts by performing them wherever possible in camera, doing it for real. Print that, please, darling. That's good. Bond was also required to outmaneuver a light aircraft, which would skim inches over the top of his new company car. Today we're shooting the sequence where the plane uh, flies over the car and lands directly in front of it. We've been rehearsing it for the last couple of days and it's really a question of timing. It's really critical that the plane's got to land directly in front of the car for the shot to work. The pilot of the plane is Tom Danaher. He's 71 years old, but not a day over 18, really. Right, here we go. Just one thing. Yeah. Don't push any of the buttons on that car. We're just going to go bombing around in it. Exactly. The film crew's final destination provided the greatest possible contrast as Bond went to Russia. Locations were scouted, photographs were taken, pinpointing the most photogenic areas in which to shoot. And St. Petersburg was chosen as the location for a spectacular tank chase even though the Russian authorities restricted the team's specially tuned stunt vehicles from traveling through the city at high speed. The chase and its establishing shots were handled by the second unit, and a sequence in which the tank plows across a crowded bridge shocked Russian citizens, who were unaware that brickwork and iron railings could be replaced by polystyrene and wood. stage in the planning of the tank scenes, it had been decided that the main part of the Russian sequence would remain back in England. So a large section of St. Petersburg was designed and constructed from scratch in just over six weeks. The decision to build uh, the St. Petersburg Street here came about because we felt that the working in uh, St. Petersburg uh, on the streets with tanks and all the other effects and action that we we're going to have to uh, do there in order to make the sequence work, the tank chase through the streets. 
would be extremely difficult to obtain the proper permissions. And once we started shooting, the roads and sewer systems uh, throughout St. Petersburg are in such a state and condition that it may have meant that we would have stopped shooting. So we made the decision that we would build a large set here that we could do a lot of the footage of uh, the tanks and the chases through the streets. And uh, I think the sequence is going to be one of the most memorable ever for a Bond film. Next, the matching interiors of St. Petersburg's buildings were shot. The arrangement of each take is laborious, and with hundreds of bullet hits to be set up for detonation, there's a lot of waiting around. I'm waiting for a shot. Extras were mixed with real-life military personnel for the filming of action sequences involving attacking Russian guards. Pierce Brosnan strengthened the film's realism by performing much of his own stunt work. Okay. Okay. 319, take five. Three, two, one, action! Polish-born actress Isabella Skorupko plays Natalia, a computer programmer who becomes accidentally embroiled in the world of espionage. Trust me. Trust you. I don't even know your name. I think Bond girls always have been strong. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's a trend, kind of. I think that question is always a little bit pathetic from journalists. Are you going to be stronger in this film? Because I heard that every Bond girl before every movie is saying the same thing, that my character is going to be much stronger this time. Of course we are strong. Bond women have always been strong, I think. Who is behind your attack on Severnaya? Who had the authorization code? Russia may have changed, but the penalty for terrorism is still death. Then what's the penalty for treason? Oh, stop it, both of you. Stop it. You're like boys with toys. She's got lots more energy than I have and ever had. She's always on the run and escaping through the whole film. It's really, really exciting. It's just amazing to see how, how much you can destroy in, in one second. This little boy would like to thank all the British Airways passengers who have donated over two million pounds to the United Nations Children's Fund.
free holidays for kids means there's absolutely no excuse for not taking the little darlings away. place where the balance of nature is so delicate, no man would dare to disturb it. Gangway, baby! No man ah! but Ace Ventura. Jim Carrey. <laughs> Ace Ventura, when nature calls. Where in the world? The PC World Sale is now on. Ring 0990 464 464 for your nearest store. SO unleaded fuels now have more cleaning power, reducing some harmful emissions by up to 20%, while still allowing your car optimum performance. SO unleaded, a new generation of performance fuels. Come on down to the Allied Carpets Half Price Bed Sale today. You'll find lots of big brand beds, many at half price. Isn't that something to get out of bed for? The Allied Carpets Half Price Bed Sale, on now. My son, uh, Christopher, he worked on the film as, a, as an AD. Third AD, second unit. And his first, second job in the business. And he had to open the studio up numerous times, 4, 4.30. And he'd go in, he'd open it up, and one particular morning he heard these noises. Was, it was in the gas plant, huge set, huge. And he heard these noises like... <laughs> and it was Martin behind the tanks, running as Bond, running as Sean Bean. <laughs> Scared the crap out of Christopher. He thought it was a burglar or something like that. But the man gets in there, and he does, he prepares. Focus on Bond as he exits the frame. We throw back to Chuckles dragging yeah. Natalia no, across from behind the truck. Is it he's dragging? Where are they coming no, 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 coming out from the building. Out of the building, and the which car is park. down the side, right? Okay, yeah, so there'll be masters right, away. That door doesn't open, of course. That would be a fine thing. Right, so, <laughs> so we're through here, right? right? And so Bond will exit. As he exits, throw to them. Let him blur through frame there, which will be my reverse cut. So he's kind of ducking as he comes through. Action! You were on your toes because you didn't want to be. You didn't want to get a whipping from his tongue. He could cut you in half. He could just cut you in half. And you know, if the prop is not there, then why isn't it there? Come on, come on, come on. Sharp as a knife. Sharp as a knife. 110 percent. Come on. It was great to do, and it is. It's wonderful when you when you're tested like that. Right, Rog, how's that look? It'll be all right. It's a bit of a light change. Do you, do you want to do a film another one? It's a joy. Stunt sequences are carefully planned and designed to be original. That often means that each new stunt sets a precedent. Certainly, nobody had attempted something like this before. The whole scene is where Bond steals it, sees the uh, heroine, his girlfriend, or the Bond girl being carted away by uh, one of the villains, and uh, the only bit of transport available to him is a tank. So in this one, Bond steals a tank, comes smashing through a wall, and pursues a tank through the streets of St. Petersburg, observing the highway code, of course. And in the course of this, there are various things, obviously, that happen with the tank, such as uh, smashing right down a brick alleyway, which is about 100 yards long. And then we come to this spot where he's going to weaving through the traffic. And this day, what we're setting up for now is where he smashes through this truck. Uh, the special effects department of uh, 
Also I put charges on some of the cans so you'll see the cans explode out of the truck and the tank come charging through, splitting the truck completely in two. And uh, like everything with this tank chase, we're, we're working in completely unknown territory because none of us have ever, even with all the experience of many members of the crew here on uh, big action movies, uh, nobody's actually done a tank chase before. So just about every shot's a new, a new experience. Like yesterday we went, the tank managed to go, up. instead of going through the wall down the alleyway, managed to go over a Panavision camera and finished up like an oil painting on the deck. So. Uh, we, uh, every, everyone brings a surprise. The largest single soundstage built for the film housed the principal Golden Eye Arena. These secret underground headquarters represent the main intersection of the information superhighway. The plot of Golden Eye reflects technological developments in today's world and the set was designed accordingly with help from leading computer specialists. This sequence came toward the end of a production which had seen the director and the production team working for 110 days straight. But if the cast and crew were tiring, it didn't show. I play Boris Ivanovich Grishenko, who is a, a very difficult person to pronounce, and is a, is a Russian computer genius who is um, the brains behind this uh, evil plot to uh, do dastardly things to the world. And this is um, Arecibo, this, this whole bit, which is where the last bit of the film takes place when, um, when the, the, the evil plan goes into action. And I'd like to also tell you about the fact that <clears throat> my costume, as you see, I, my legs are quite um, to the forefront of my costume. And this is because it's the 90s now, and James Bond films, they don't exploit women's bodies, they exploit men's bodies. So I'm a Bond boy, really, and I, I'm happy with that. Fine, Mr. Russell. Young Cox. Still no. Stand by here and really sharp down it. Here we go and tighten those gaps. Three, two, one. That was rather interesting, that one, because it was badly lit. I'm sorry, I'm going to fire this man. Can I just talk about the directing? <laughs> Brilliant, darling. As cool as you can get. Well done. Check the gate, please. Brilliant. Oh, Brilliant. Well done, effects. Well done, Pierre. Great stuff. Earplugs. Earplugs. That's what this performance is about. Earplugs. <laughs> I was required to do a perfect swallow dive off the top of this dam from 700 feet. So I physically had to hold this position while hitting really a, an area in space that would enable me to track away from the wall all the time and so limit the chances of me actually hitting the wall. Um, people would walk along the top of this dam in absolute silence and they'd tentatively peer over and go pale at the thought because this dam was awe-inspiring. They have a trauma clinic ready, an emergency helicopter to rush you there if it all goes wrong. Um, and the vision that sticks in my mind uh, is standing up there and they've got all the cameras up to speed and um, the assistant's just about to give me action. And I could see out of the corner of my eye this little Italian crane driver who looks pale with fright at the thought of what I was doing. <laughs> and just as I was about to go, he does the sign of the crucifix <laughs> and, you know, you, you have to live with that sort of thing and you, you realise that it's sometimes quite a crazy life you lead.
I think the important thing about Bond was that he, <clears throat> he was a great lover of the high life, but he could also murder without any remorse. I suppose traditionally with Bond films, you know, there's never a lot of blood and guts flying about. That doesn't, that's not part of the, the genre, really. I mean, there's lots of guns being fired and there's lots of action and so on and so forth. But I don't think there's anything that would... Uh, I think it's tremendously exciting, but I don't think there's anything that would offend uh, um, anybody. With this particular film, GoldenEye, and my introduction to the world, I think it's pretty streamlined and it's... It's almost, I'd like to say, a classic bond. But I think we've adhered to all the, the, the points and issues that make this character work. As a professional, one has to string the film together. One can't say, well, I'll have this look like a... Uh, to lose our trek painting and then I'll have this look like a Rodin sculpture. Uh, if the two things don't fit, there's obviously no point in putting them together. So I think in any film you try and uh, make everything follow on. And what I tried to do with the look of the film is enhance the reality and give it a slightly glamorous reality. It's a traditional thing, of course, at the end of a film to say, oh, everybody was wonderful. There's always a couple you want to strangle, you know. The... But the truth of the matter is on this one, they were all terrific. You got one shot at this to get this right, so you better not screw it up. When Martin wanted to do it, and I've done a lot of films with Martin, I knew that he would, he and I would do what we wanted to do, and the Bond people were good enough to say, well, it's your film, you make it as you want to do it. Um, and therefore, that was terrific, because it meant we could Im bring all the best things that we had to all the best things that they had and bring them together in one place. you never know I don't really know uh, consciously what I bring to it. You have to look at the film to see that. Those incredible things can fly through the air. Death is always seconds, inches away. It's a kiss. It's a winner. It's really a great time in the cinema.